Very good morning to all of you. Wow, why are you all seated so far behind? <laughs> See, the blessing is all in front. No, it's not the saliva. Is it? <laughs> but what a joy it is that we can come as God's people to praise Him, to worship Him. You know, all of us know very well uh, what the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ is, isn't it? Where Jesus in Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20 said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, you know, go and make disciples of all the nations. Yeah? And the, call, the calling to, to the discipleship and the calling to go and make disciples is very much an integral part of uh, uh, our, our commission. So as we come before the Lord this morning, let us be mindful that the Lord, who is the Lord of, of glory, He is the Lord of missions, uh, he's, he's with us, and the Lord be with you. We say together the, uh, the prayer. Let us uh, join our hearts to say the collect for purity together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, The Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these laws in our hearts. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all men. Let us pray. As we reflect on the events of the past week, help us to, as the Lord would prompt us and remind us if there's anything in us that we need to bring before the Lord afresh, to set a right, to set a, a right, right anew before the Lord, may we do so now. Together we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought, in word, and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Receive now the words of absolution. So, mighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God's forgiven people, let us now praise and worship Him together with His following songs as even the opening song reminds us that God uh, sent His Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, to come uh, to save us from sins. And His desire is to... God brings out across the land Yet you left the gates of angels in to seek and save the lost and exchange the joy of heaven for the anguish of the cross. With a prayer you fed the hungry, with a word you spilled the sea. Yet how silently you suffer that the guilty may go free. You're the author of creation, you're the Lord of every man, and your cry of love. Out across the land 
You're the word of God the Father From before the world began Every star and every planet Has been fashioned by your hand All creation goes together By the power of your voice Let the skies declare your glory Let the land and seas rejoice You're the author of creation You're the Lord of every man And your cry of love rings out across the land Yet you let the gaze of angels Came to seek and save the lost And exchanged the joy of heaven For the anguish of the cross With a prayer you fed the hungry With a word you still the see Yet how silently you suffer That the guilty may go free You're the author of creation You're the Lord of this morning we pray that you enable our hearts to hear your cry your cry Lord and call to for people to come to you come to salvation come to be saved and Lord we know that you are our creator you are also our redeemer help us this morning Lord to capture a fresh glimpse of who you are and your desire to save the lost Lord because there will come that day Lord when all will gather before you in that holy place, in the holy city, in the heavenly Jerusalem. And Lord, help us this morning to capture a glimpse of that and to join together with the heavenly host to worship you, Lord. Truly, Lord, draw our hearts to you. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. The city of our God, the holy place, the joy of the whole world, and great is the Lord in whom we have the victory. He aids us against the enemy. We bow down on our knees. And Lord, we want to lift your name on high. And Lord, we want to thank you for the work you've done in our lives. And Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. For you alone are God eternal throughout earth and heaven. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. The city of our God, the holy place, the joy of the whole land, and great is the Lord in whom we have the victory. He aids us against the enemy. down on our knees. And Lord, we want to lift your name on high. And Lord, we want to thank 
thank you for the work you've done in our lives. And Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. For you alone are God in you've done in our lives and Lord we trust in your unfailing love for you alone our God is eternal throughout earth and heaven above for you alone our God eternal throughout earth and heaven above for you and surely as you are the Lord of heaven and earth, truly as you reign and rule now, Lord, in heaven above, Lord, we know what a privilege and joy it is that you have called us unto yourself to serve you and to glorify you. And what a privilege that is, Lord. Teach us never to take you for granted. Lord, but to know who you are and who we are before you. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, living in me. Gentle Savior, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and all within me falls at your throne. Your majesty, I can but bow, I lay the men, just the brothers. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, living in me, gentle Savior, closest friend, strong deliverer, beginning and end. All within me falls at your throne altogether. Your majesty, I can but bow. I lay my all before you now. In royal robes, I don't deserve. I live to serve your majesty. Just the sisters. Earth and heaven, worship.
worship you. Love eternal, faithful and true, who bought the nations, ransomed souls, brought the sinner near to your throne. All within me, cries out in praise. All together, your, your majesty. majesty, I can but bow. Hallelujah, Lord. What a privilege it is that you've called us to serve you on this side of eternity and help us to be faithful, Lord, in all our ways. And truly, we long and look forward to that day when we'll truly be in glory together with all the saints and to acknowledge that salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Praise and glory, wisdom and thanks, honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Salvation belongs to our God Who sits upon the throne And unto the land Praise and glory Wisdom and thanks Honor and power and strength Be to our God forever and ever Be to our God forever and ever Be to our God forever and ever Amen And we, the redeemed, shall be strong in purpose and unity. called us and set us apart for your purposes, enable, Lord, us to be faithful and to be found faithful in the day of your coming. Lord, that we may truly rejoice together with all the saints in glory and declare that salvation belongs to you. 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we sit down, can we turn to the person behind and in front of us and say, I welcome you in the name and in the love of the Lord. Can we do that? Yeah. Great to see you here today. <laughs> You may be seated. Today's scripture reading will be taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 3 to 9. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 3 to 9. Verse 3. And he told them many things in parables saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. Immediately, they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Shall we just bow our head and uh, commit this time to our Lord in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for gathering us once again on this Sunday morning. And most importantly, Lord, we offer you praise, thanksgiving, and all that we are, we bow before you, <coughs> before your throne. Because, Lord, you are our creator and you are our provider. We thank you for all that you have done in our lives, for all that you have shown us and taught us in your word. So this moment, Father, use my mouth to speak forth your word to each and every one of us. And through your Holy Spirit, let your word simmer in the heart, sing into our heart. And that, Lord, you let your word not grow and bear fruit that you have desired for us and you have planned for us accordingly to each and every one of us. May we, Lord, be obedient unto your word to bring you honour and glory to this life that you have given us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Sometime back, is, is the echo a bit too loud for you? Yeah, okay, you are okay means okay. <laughs> hey, sometime back, uh, I received a comment on uh, one of my pictures posted on Facebook. So I suppose uh, all of us here know what is Facebook, right? Do you all know? How many of you do not know what is Facebook? Okay, no one puts up your hand means you all know, right? Okay, but this morning we have someone who really do not know what Facebook is. Okay, so since you all know, okay, and I have posted one of the pictures of my cycling data. Right? Some of you who are my friend, you have perhaps seen it. Right? And uh, my friend commented, keep it up, health is wealth. And I think Many of us have heard of this quote. Have you heard of this? Yes. And perhaps some of us even encourage others with it. Correct? No, nobody encourages others that by telling them, hey, health is well. I'm sure there, there is. Uh -huh. don't, don't, don't have to be shy. Okay, I used it too. All right? There's nothing wrong. Okay. Yeah. And I... I'm... Curious, right? Uh, since some of you do say and respond, say that you actually use this as well, and some of you uh, never respond. Never, uh, so I'm just curious. Um, can, can I see a show of hands? How many of you believe health is wealth? Yeah, praise the Lord. Keep your hands up, all right? Nothing to be shy of, all right? I too believe that, right, okay. And uh, 
Now you have the other hand free, right? Since you raise up one hand. So can you use the other hand to reach out into your pocket, grab your phone, all right, and start your bank app and scan to pay our church QR code. <laughs> Not Sabo, yeah. Okay, jokes, jokes aside, yeah. Uh, we do need to build up healthy finances for building maintenance. And of course, the other facilities and ministries of our church. But I want to ask you this question too. How can we have a healthy body? Would you say exercise? Yeah? Uh, would you say eat healthily? Yeah. Would you say even go for vacation, relax your mind so that you have a better mental health? Yeah. And I believe for all of us, or most of us, if not all, uh, we would believe that exercise is good for us and it promotes a healthy body. Even our health promotion board is also encouraging people to be active, eat healthy, and exercise, move a lot. You know, besides the physical exercise, there is one other thing needed to ensure we have good health, and that is to have regular medical checkup. This is an exercise that takes stock of our health. Whether we do it yearly or half yearly or some more frequent. And if we think that these are good must-haves and, and to maintain a good and healthy body, I just wonder how many of us do take stock of our spiritual health. You know, today is the 19th of June. The first half of the year is drawing to a close. And I think it is also high time for a spiritual checkup or stop taking. And this is essential for all of us as Christians for the growth and development of our spiritual health. And if you do believe, if you are spiritually healthy, physically, you too will be also healthier. Have you taken your spiritual stock for the first half of this year or maybe last year, 2021? How was it like? Have you grown and be more mature in faith to become more like Jesus Christ than ever before? Where did you start and where are you now? And what is the condition of your heart? And I believe we all know, Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And today, we will learn about the parable of the sower. And I believe the parable will help us identify the condition of our hearts and call us into action so that we may once again love the Lord our God with all our hearts, soul, and mind. So let's dive in and turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 to 9. Matthew chapter 13, verses 3 to 9. If you, if you look at verse 3, Matthew the writer tells us that Jesus told them many things in parables. What is parable? You know, the short definition of a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Parables tell the story using something people see or encounter every day. And the purpose is to help them understand spiritual truth. You know, when Jesus taught in parables, he used things that people of his day were familiar with. If you think about it, if Jesus were to be here today, he will use something more different from what he has done during those days. Perhaps there might be fewer stories about farming and more stories about cars, 
property and social media. Here, if you look at the passage, in this teaching moment, most of the people that Jesus was speaking to were familiar with farming because they were an agricultural society. They all understood about seeds and planting because they grew crops, fruits and vegetables. Nonetheless, what we have today is the parable of the sower. Perhaps some of you may find the title, the parable of the sower, kind of misleading. Like those of you who read it, think about it, and perhaps that may be your thinking too. It is kind of a misleading because the sower himself in this passage is not the focus. It's not the focus of attention, nor is he identified. He is just called the sower. But it is the seed and the soils which are the subject. And you may have observed there are three elements in this parable. The sower, the seed, and the ground where the seed fell, or the type of soil. There are no further details given about the sower other than that he went out to sow. There are also no details concerning the seed other than it fell to the ground in verse 4. But much of the verses talk about the type of ground where the seed fell. Verse 4, verse 5, verse 7, and verse 8. And of course, the eventual impact of what happens to the seed. Let us look at the first type of soil that was mentioned in verses 3 to 4. Jesus then begins the parable of the sower. And the sower sows his seed. And some seeds fall along the path and were eaten by birds. Can I see a show of hands? How many of you do gardening? Praise the Lord. There are quite a lot of you. And if you do, then you will know how to germinate seeds, right? Or start seedlings perhaps in those little pots or a seed starter tray where you put some good soil, good soil mixtures in and then you put in the seed and then water it. And then what do you do after that? You hope it will germinate, right? However, it was not so for agricultural farming in those days where Jesus was. In those days, when a farmer went out to the field to sow seed, he would scatter the seed on the ground, much like sprinkling. Right? So some of the seeds fell along the path. A path is where many people have walked on that particular area, that particular soil. And as more people walk on it, the soil starts to get packed in. Now, if you can imagine uh, over this hall, what we have here, two sides of the pew, right, is the fields. And then along the, the, the two sides and the center of the field is a path, a walking path. So the more people walk on the path, the more it packs down the soil and becomes what? Hardened. And those seeds that fell on the path could not sink into the hardened soil. And before long, these seeds became bird feet. You know, <clears throat> my wife did some planting of the lady's finger from seeds. Right? Um, yeah, can you show the next slide, please? Yeah, this is my lady's finger. <laughs> Not my wife's finger, <laughs> okay? But it's the vegetable named lady's finger. And we planted them into a rectangular pot, which you see from the picture here, hung by the corridor of our flat. Initially, it went well and produced many plants, and later bear much fruit too. But as we planted the subsequent generation of seeds, we realized that not many germinate. And when some grew as little shoots, 
You know what happened? The miner came. You know what's miner? Miner is a bird, right? It came and took those young shoots away. It is then that we realize the bird actually come to the pot and eat up our seed too. Right? If you ever observe the bird actually, uh, like chicken like that, you know, use a claw to dig up the, 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 the soil. So you can imagine that those seeds that is on hardened ground, on the, on, on the path, walking path, are easily bird feeds. Right? The bird can easily come and pick them up and eat them up. Okay, let's look at the second one. Some seeds fell on rocky ground. If you look at uh, verses 5 to 6, the seeds, although it springs up but without soil, the plant gets scorched by the sun. You know, things can really grow on rocky ground. Rocky ground means underneath the ground, although there, there will be a layer of topsoil on top of this rocky ground. And basically, that soil is not able to sustain the growth of the plant. So the plant will not live long because they must have roots down in the soil for nutrients and water. And that is contending with even the hot sun. Any seed that started to grow in this thin soil soon withered in the intense heat and it they die off. The third, third one. Some seeds fell among thorns. Let's look at verse 7. This seed also grows but is choked off because of the thorny plants that surround it. Thorns here also refers to weeds, not the, the one that people smoke. Eh? Okay? Weeds are, are, are plants that we don't want, all right? because they destroy our good plant, the plant that we are uh, planting. Why? Because they suck up all the nutrients and the water. Our good plant will not be able to grow well. If it's not able to grow well, it perhaps left with nothing for it to bear fruit. So, it don't produce any fruit. And finally, look at verse 8. The verse 8 depicts the seeds that fell on good soil and produced grain bountifully. Some 104, some 60, and some 30. You know, all farmers, like people who know, who are expert professional farmers, they will know just what kind of soil for their plants or their crops. They will add the right mix of fertilizer so that their plant or their crops will grow healthily and in due time to bear fruit. They want their seeds to grow into large healthy plants that they will give them a good harvest. And if, if it is done right, a handful of seed that they planted will produce many times in harvest for them. And we look at verse 9, appended behind these uh, verses in the parable. We have Jesus urging the crowd to listen to what he is teaching them. Jesus here desires that those among the crowd who are indecisive about their faith may truly listen and obey. Brothers and sisters, it is also a call for us to listen and obey so that we may understand and produce much fruit to the praise and honour of our God. So what is the truth that all these soils represent? Thank God, Jesus explained the parable in Matthew chapter 30, verses 18 to 23. Let us look at Jesus' explanation accordingly. First, along the path. Jesus said, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. This verse tells us that the seed that is sown in the, is the word of the kingdom. It is the gospel. It is the good news about Jesus Christ. The soils are the hearts of the people how they respond to the message. The key condition of a person's heart can be compared to the different kind of soils and receive, that received the seed. And some people hear the truth 
But like the hardened paths, they do not let it sink into their heart because of the hardened of their hearts. And what happened? And soon, Satan takes the truth away. If people do not receive and respond to the word with faith, their opportunity will be stolen by the evil one. While we are working hard to share the gospel with people around us, our family members, Satan and his minions are also working hard to prevent people from responding to it receptively. He would cause people to reject the message. Jesus warns that the devil, who is the thief, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Next, the rocky ground. Verse 20, As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation and persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. These people here hear the message with great joy, but like seeds on rocky ground, they do not let it take root. They do not let it sink into their heart. They seem to be happy, happy to hear about Jesus and his great love, but they do not let it sink into their heart. And on the outside, they may express great enthusiasm. But inwardly, they do not carefully consider the word of God. Just like the great crowds who followed Jesus, only a few were his true disciples. When these people faced pressure, trials, persecution, or perhaps some unfortunate events in their lives, they quickly forget about God's word. They quickly forget about God. They do not turn to God. And a true believer who follows Jesus, no matter what, will continue to follow Jesus. True peace and joy come not in the absence of tribulations, but the presence of Jesus in all circumstances. Amen? Praise the Lord. Next, thorny ground, verses, verse 22. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choked the word, and it proves unfruitful. Some people hear God's word and start to grow, but soon they become preoccupied with the cares of their daily living and the pursuit of worldly gains. They may think if they only had more money and more things, more stuff, they would be happy. This is a very wrong belief. And this wrong belief takes up all the person's time and energy. Just like the weeds steal all the nutrients from the good plants. They do not focus on living for God. So they don't produce any spiritual food. Finally, the good soil. Verse 23, As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case, a hundredfold, in another sixty, and another thirty. Wow! Isn't it great to know that some seeds fell on good soil? This represents the people who heard God's word, believe it, and obey it. Their hearts received the message of the kingdom. They grow gradually and steadily as they obey, and eventually they produce much fruit. Just now I told you to imagine this is the two fields that we have. And you know what? All of you who are here, who are listening to the word, are on good soil. Your hearts 
The condition of your heart is like the good soil, listening to God's word. And we want to go beyond that. Not only do we want to hear and listen, we want to obey God's word too. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, I do not know your thoughts or your heart, but I know this parable has shown us the four different conditions of our hearts. As you take stock of the spiritual condition of your heart, perhaps Psalms 139 verses 23 and 24 may be a prayer for each and every one of us to ask God, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in a way everlasting. We need God's help in pointing out our flaws in our lifestyle. And we need God to help us to know our shortcomings. Friends, brothers and sisters, only God and His love can cause us to change. His word can transform our hearts and our mind. Today, God is speaking to you and me. He is, ch- is challenging us to take stock of our hearts. Are we going to do something about the problems and issues that plague our life, that cause our hearts to grow cold and turn away from God? Some of us here may be having a hardened heart. We may be selective to listen and obey God's word. We may think certain commands do not apply to us today. But God's word reminds us that the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joy and of morals, morals, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we, each and every one of us, must give an account on the day. God knows us better than we do. And his word can transform our hearts and minds if only we allowed it. Some of us may be the rocky, rocky ground. We shrunk when facing pressure to start to stand firm in our faith. Maybe we are in trials and we find it difficult to cope. Maybe we are ostracized for or being ridiculed for being a Christian by our family, by our friends, and we want to give up. Friends, it is time to turn back to God and stop putting God to shame or dishonor Him. You know what? Jesus encouraged us with these words. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And these words from our Lord in Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Every day, no doubt, is a new challenge to our faith. But we can be strong and courageous, trusting in God's promises that He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is always with us wherever we go. Some of us are worried about the problems of our daily lives. Work, children, and even relationships, which are the thorns in the field. Is your mind preoccupied with the cares of this world, spending much time in pursuit of what this world could give? Money, position, fame, power. So much so 
your identity is not in Christ. But your car, property, monetary worth, and title. I came across someone named Mercedes. I do not know what is the relation with that. But perhaps it tells us something. There is no time for God for these people. And their word, or, or God's word, because all the time are committed to the pursuit of worldly things. You know what? Jesus gave us a very good warning. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth or nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And finally, we want to praise the Lord. Some of us have or are having the condition of good soil. We put our trust in Jesus, our hearts receive the message of the kingdom and the seed grow and take root in our heart. And I believe all of us aspire to have a heart in such a condition, like the good soil. This is our Lord Jesus' calling for us, each and every one of us, to take stock of our spiritual health. And if we fall short, we have to turn back to Him who is faithful and just. If we confess our sins, He will forgive us. He will empower us to bear much fruit if we abide in Him. For apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Let us bow our heads. I want to spend a lot, I want to allow for a moment of time for each and every one of us to come before our Lord, to ask God to search our hearts, and to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal and convict each of us the condition of our heart. Jesus, before his ascension, told his disciple, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the world. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for your word for each and every one of us. We thank you even, Lord, for your call for us to take stock of our spiritual health. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who will stir our hearts and help us to examine ourselves and convict us and help us to know where we stand, where we are in our relationship with you and to know the condition of our heart. Or we may have forsake you, we may have shamed you, we may have disobeyed you through our thoughts, our words, and our action. May you grant forgive, for forgiveness to each and every one of us who truly seek for your forgiveness. 
And empower us, Father, to live this life according to your word, to the praise and honour and glory to your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue in this, uh, in this way, I, may I encourage us to just take a few moments to think through the things that have been said also. You know, the soil of our hearts uh, from time to time can, of course, uh, due to various things, can become compacted, become hard. There can be things that overgrow and like thorns, you know, take over that, that good soil. And there can be also things, uh, rubble and all that, that gets strewn onto that soil and becomes rocky. It's so important that we allow the soil of our hearts to always be yielded to the Lord. And the, 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 the wonderful thing is that you know, there is no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. Isn't it wonderful? God doesn't condemn us because He's come to save us, right? But He wants to, he wants to enable our soil <laughs> to become fruitful for His glory. Yeah. And as we sing the song of response, it's a, it's a song that calls us to just, calls out to the Lord to just take us as we are. Please uh, sit down, feel free to be seated as we reflect on the words and sing along. Jesus, take me as I am. I can come no other way. Take me deeper into you. Make my flesh life melt away. Make me like a precious stone. Crystal clear and finely whole. Life of Jesus shining through. Giving glory back to you. Jesus, take me as I am. I can come no other way. Take me deeper into you. Make my flesh life melt away. Make me like a precious stone, crystal clear and finely whole. Light of Jesus shining through, giving glory back to you. Giving glory back to you. And truly, Lord, that's the prayer of our hearts, that you take us as we are and make us into who you want us to be so that our lives may bear forth much fruit, even fruit that will last, to glorify you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stand as we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray together the collect for the first Sunday after Trinity.
almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified. Hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that each in his vocation and ministry may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name, to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us sit on you as we enter time into intercession. Father Lord, we just want to thank you for loving us, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty for our sins on the cross, and truly giving us this privilege of being able to declare and live out our faith in his resurrection publicly here in Singapore. Today, we want to pray especially for those in the world who are suffering for their faith, even as they face harassment, violence, imprisonment, or even death for being followers of Jesus. Protect and preserve them, Lord. May you grant them the grace, courage, strength and perseverance as they anchor their hope in you and they continue to bear faithful witness in the midst of their suffering. May your comfort be with those who have lost loved ones or were ostracised by loved ones and friends for their faith. We want to pray especially for those who recently came to faith that they will have this access to the Christian care and fellowship and will continue to grow as disciples of Christ in their knowledge of God through his word. We also want to remember their persecutors. May you open the eyes of their hearts, Lord, that they may gain understanding. They will turn away from evil and towards faith in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, truly for your blessing, protection and provision towards Singapore. We want to ask that you help our leaders and those who are placed in positions of authority, that they may be guided by you, Lord, to do what is right and good for this nation and the people. Will you enable our Prime Ministers and uh, other Ministers in their respective portfolios, especially those who have taken on new ones recently, to continue to serve faithfully and effectively? Grant them wisdom, Lord, to make good decisions, particularly in relation to these ongoing and recent challenges of geopolitical tensions and food security. Today, we want to continue praying for the Diocese of Singapore, in, particularly, um, in particular, uh, St. Paul's Church, and their vicar, Reverend Jeremy Panaya, um, parish assistant, Mr. Leon Stewart, the priest in the Chinese congregation, Reverend Chu Cheng Leong, um, priest in the Indian congregation, Reverend Ezra Sivakuma, as well as a parish worker, Mr. Jason Simon. We also want to remember the principal for St. Paul's Church Kindergarten, Mrs. Yvonne Chong. May you, Lord, continue to grant wisdom, grace, and unity among the clergy, staff, and workers in this parish, Lord, even as they uh, love and serve your people. Father God, we also want to pray for Holy Trinity Church. Today, we want to pray especially for Net Ministry and the leadership um, with Pastor James that uh, is overseeing the ministry, as well as Gabriel Tiang, Lin Ho, Rachel Tan, Gideon Khan, Grace Tan, Jared Chan, Owen Lam, Stephanie Chua, Irvin Lam, Jedediah Chong, Audrey Chan, Jaden Chan, Lim Li Hui, Jolene Ding, and Ling Di Ren. Father God, we want to thank you for these people that are serving you in this ministry. And we also want to thank you a lot for the just recently concluded Leaders Retreat. Even through what uh, you have shared with us, Lord, in your word, may you just continue to bless and build up uh, the leaders in their capabilities and capacities to serve you, Lord, and to uh, carry out your plans and purposes for our youth. We ask of your spirit to, to fill, to equip and empower them, Lord, even as they set out to achieve what Net Ministry is all about, which is to nurture, to empower and to transform uh, this younger generation, Lord, to accomplish all things in your glory. We all want to pray for the youths that are, are giving this opportunity to serve at the Youth Sunday service on the 17th of July. We pray that uh, the ones that have stepped up or will be approached, Lord, will do so cheerfully and with joy, and that all who attend the service will be ministered to, Lord, and encouraged. We pray for the efforts of the youth, that as they witness, Lord, um, uh, for God and in service to you, Lord, all who attend will be strengthened, Lord, in unity and fellowship in Christ. 
truly, Lord, indeed, the, the time that we have left is all that we have of worth, be it shorter or longer. We just pray, Lord, for, for you to continue to uphold our congregation, Lord, and to, to empower us, Lord, truly in your spirit. Let us now spend a moment of quietness and commit the names of those who we know are suffering in body, mind, or spirit in prayer. Father, Lord, we thank you for these names. And we also want to remember those who may have uh, struggles and challenges that may be invisible to us. We commit all these people to you um, that in the midst of suffering and as they reach out, Lord, for help, will you grant them comfort and healing and courage and hope, Lord, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Fertilize our, the soil of our hearts, Lord, so that we can continue to bear fruit um, calling to your purpose and for your glory. All this we ask and pray in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite us all to stand for the peace, the sharing of the peace. Before we do that, can we just take a quick look around us, who we are saying this uh, with, <laughs> sharing the peace with. Truly, we are the body of Christ in the one spirit, we were all baptized in the one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share the peace of Christ one another. You may be seated. <laughs> This morning, we also want to especially acknowledge all the fathers and grandfathers in our midst. <laughs> if you're a father or a grandfather, could you kindly stand where you are, please? Yeah. You better know who you are. <laughs> you know, Malachi chapter 4, verse 6 says, How the Lord will turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children. I'm very well aware that sometimes in family life, there can be challenges in terms of relationships between family members. But you know what? Our Lord is the one who reconciles, who puts families together, who grows families together, and who brings families together. And what a blessing it is to know that God reveals himself to us as our Heavenly Father. So being a father is such a privilege is such a blessing. Can we just say a prayer for them? And those around, these fathers and grandfathers, can you just stretch your hand as we pray for a blessing on them? Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for all the fathers and grandfathers in our midst. Thank you for their faithfulness in uh, looking after the family, in providing, in protecting, in guiding, in teaching, in directing. Enable them, Lord, to fulfill all that you have asked of their lives. And Lord, that even in their years, Lord, uh, especially the older ages, that they will truly uh, experience even uh, a blessing upon blessing, Lord. And I pray, Father, for love to flow freely between fathers and their families and their children, and that there will always be healing, there will always be reconciliation, and there will always be restoration. And continue to bless each and every father in our midst today and ask that you will continue, Lord, to use them to bear shining witness within their families and in the communities and to the world. For we ask and pray all these in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless all the fathers. <laughs> now, uh, also, any newcomers in our midst? Anybody who's here for the first time? Is there any visitor, a newcomer? Okay, everybody's here before, yeah? Okay, good. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Firstly, uh, for the 9 a.m. service, uh, every fourth Saturday, uh, Sunday, there is going to be what's called a sung uh, Eucharist service. For those who are, who are familiar with that or had grown up with that, uh, this may be something that you, you may want to uh, see uh, or participate in, rather. Uh, we are thankful that we have Dr. Margaret Chen, who is a lecturer at uh, Singapore Bible College. Uh, she's coming to actually uh, lead this, and... Uh, uh, she herself is a very accomplished organist, plays for the SSO, and has trained quite a number of our church organists, including uh, Lim Jin Kai from St. Andrew's Cathedral. So she'll be bringing her students who will be 
uh, forming the choir. And uh, how many of you have sung in choirs before? Well, wow, a good number of you. How many of you uh, would like to sing in a choir? Okay, some of you. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> What I'm going to share is this. Uh, somewhere down the road, uh, Dr. Margaret Chen is going to recruit and uh, train uh, the choir. And uh, towards the uh, end of December, there's going, it's already planned uh, that uh, we are going to have what's called a Lessons and Carols service. Are you all familiar with Lessons? Nine Lessons and Carols? Lessons and Carols service? It's, it's a very beautiful Christmas uh, Advent, uh, which, which is uh, uh, sung during Advent, where it tells the Christmas story in song and and scripture, yeah. So if you are you are keen, uh, pay attention. There will be more notices coming. Okay. So every fourth Sunday uh, at the nine o'clock service, she will be uh, helping us with that, and we'll be using the Salisbury uh, arrangement uh, for the singing. For those of you who know such things, anyway, if you don't, then come and see. Uh, now for the our 80th anniversary photo shoot, please kindly note it is only today and next Sunday. Uh, <laughs> to <laughs> occasions. So if you have yet to take your photograph, please do not uh, delay any further and uh, do the necessary, okay? Next slide. You know, some people have been wondering and asking questions, uh, are we living in the end times? Is this the end of days? Uh, is it the beginning of the end? If you have such questions, then this course would be, uh, a seminar would be absolutely helpful to you. Uh, it's conducted by Reverend Dr. So Guan Chin. Uh, he himself is a, what is called a systematic theologian. Eh? That means to say, you can ask him any question, throw any curveball to him about the scripture and Bible and theology. He should be, he should be able to answer you. Okay? Uh, so this uh, is uh, where he will provide an explanation from the Old Testament, from the Gospels, as well as from the book of Revelation regarding some of the things that have been said about the end times. Uh, the dates are there. The cost is $25. And the details for signing up is in our e-bulletin, so you can uh, ch check that out. For those of you who want to register, like sending uh, a physical reg registration form, that can be made available to you, and please kindly contact the church office if you desire to do it that way. Okay? For those who do not know Facebook, <laughs> anyway, let's face it. <laughs> there are those like that. <laughs> Next slide. Registration for primary one under phase 2B. I know a few of you have asked about this. Now, please kindly take note that there's going to be uh, online registration open only for two days, 19th July and 20th July, okay? So, uh, for you, uh, for those of you who uh, uh, obviously know, I mean, we, we know that it does help to have a vicar's uh, endorsement form in the application, although it's no guarantee uh, that you're going to get a place, yeah? But nonetheless, uh, if this applies to you, please kindly contact the church office there are also details in the church bulletin. Next slide. Sunday school is still closed, but I love to see the presence of children in the, in the service. Don't you? Yes. Yeah, lovely to have all the children in our midst. Let, let's give a clap to the children too. It's also a testament to the fathers and the mothers, you know, how they look after them. So school, uh, Sunday school will reopen on the 3rd of July, okay? Next slide. As Pastor James said, put one hand up, one hand in the phone. Eh? So now it's this... This, uh, this opportunity for you to uh, bring your tithes and offerings uh, to the Lord. As we do so, let us uh, offer our hearts uh, to the Lord as well and ourselves uh, to the Lord as we sing together uh, this offertory hymn, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. Shall we rise as we sing?
Lord, we pray that we may never lose sight of who you are every moment and every day of our lives. Enable us, Lord, as we go forth from here, that we may do so in your strength and in your power. Receive now the blessing, the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. As we go forth from here, let us do so with the joy of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Feel free to clap and sing along. Rejoice, rejoice, Christ is in you, the hope. Of glory in our hearts, He lives, He lives, His breath is in you. Arise, a mighty army, we arise. Now is the time for us to march upon the land into our hands. He will give the ground we play. He rides in majesty to lead us into victory. The world shall see that Christ is Lord. Rejoice, rejoice, Christ is in you, the hope of glory in our hearts. He lives, He lives, His breath is in you. Arise, a mighty army, we arise. God is at work in us, His purpose to Just the ladies. into his opportunity so that the glory goes to him. Rejoice, 
rejoice, rejoice, Christ is in you, the hope of glory in our hearts. He lives, he lives, his breath is in you, arise, a mighty army, we arise, we arise, we arise. God bless you. Have a great week ahead. The service is over.